FM 94, The Dark. It is that time again. It's time to get to know a new artist here. We play on The Dark, and uh, I'm excited about this because on the phone we have, I guess you're not really a Minnesota native because you originally, I think, were from North Dakota, but we could call you now a Minnesota transplant to Minnesota. We're talking with Kat Perkins. And, of course, if you haven't heard that name before, and then all of a sudden, you know what, maybe I do remember that name. Uh, that's because if you remember back maybe about a year or so ago, uh, she was on national television on this show called The Voice. And uh, glad to have you on board tonight here. Kat, how you doing? Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for letting me be on your show. I'm doing well. Thank you. Hey, let's talk about, I guess, the history of you and uh, how this all came about. And first of all, let's talk about your musical background and how did that all start for you? Oh, my gosh. I, mean, I started singing when I was, like, three years old. But um, by the time I was 15 over in North Dakota, I um, I convinced my father to start a band with me and my sister. And uh, we started playing out, um, even in the clubs But about that time. And um, I was addicted. You know, I, I, I knew I was born to entertain and wanted to do music. Um, so as soon as I graduated in North Dakota... I moved here to Minnesota, so I've been here for ever and ever. And I, um, I started bands out here. I did some theater, and um, and I was always very proactive in the scene out here in Minnesota. Very cool, very cool. You know, you you mentioned theater in that, uh, and obviously, being a singer, sometimes you have to be a little theatrical. And if you're a front person, that's a lot of times what you are has did that help you out a little bit at least kind of getting maybe out of your shell a little bit or maybe you weren't one of those persons that was ever really bottled up in the shell yeah i don't know i mean i talk to my old teachers a lot and they always say oh my gosh it was so weird because you were so shy in high school but <laughs> <laughs> i don't ever feel like i was that shy sometimes i guess but theater definitely helped me you know get out of my shell and and just provide another level to singing i mean or as part of, as far as it goes entertainment um because i had that theatrical background it also helped me so much on the voice just to understand choreography not that we were dancing on the voice but we had stage blocking that was you know things you had to remember as you were singing the song because there was a you know you're doing a live television show and there was lighting and everything that went and special effects um that went with your music your song so oh my gosh my theater background i'm so lucky to have done that and, and have that as part of my story very cool very cool talk with cat perkins i want to get into the voice here in a little bit but let's get some other background on you before uh, i know when we started this interview we talked about you actually were in a band i believe you fronted that band called scarlet haze there was a band out of the twin cities talk about that band a little bit and it sounds like you have a few of your bandmates currently with you right now Yes! Oh my gosh. We started Scarlet Hayes back in 2004 um, after I moved here to the cities. And man, we had a huge like burst of success right off the bat when we started that band. Um, I started writing my own songs and uh, we decided to call it Scarlet Hayes and we started playing out. Well, within the first year of playing in that band, we entered a contest to open up for Bon Jovi. <laughs> And we won. We made it, and we got to play at a sold-out Target Center in Minneapolis, downtown. 20,000 people, all original music, and it was a huge moment for us and my band. Uh, and I was so just on top of the world back then. And we kept playing. We had some great momentum. We eventually got a record deal, and we toured the nation for a while. And, um, yeah, so I have... I have, I have two of the, the dudes from that band in my band right now, um, and we're just called Cat Perkins, obviously. And then the producer that produced a couple of our records is actually the drummer in my band right now as well. So mm -hmm. it's all in the family. And was it more of a rock side of things? Was that what that band was? or? Yeah. Okay. Let's, how do you say, let's see, like active rock, I guess? Okay. Say, like way harder rock than what we do now. It was um, definitely more that time of... of of the industry where, you know, rock, like Hailstorm and those things were, like, more popular and there was um, a lot more rock going on. Okay. I, I did some reading. I tried to do a little research as much as I can, but you, you never can believe what's on the Internet, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so it's great to talk to the actual artist to see if it's actually true or not. 
But uh, I was doing some reading, and it said that you did have some surgery on your vocal cords. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Oh, the, the, the um, what do you call it, the um, most depressing time of my, my career. I, um, I ended up a couple of years ago um, just falling ill, like suddenly. It was like overnight almost where I lost my voice. And, and um, I just was so unexplained, and it wouldn't get any better. And I was limping through my shows, and I was terrified. And so I finally saved up enough money to go to the doctor. <laughs> and uh, and he, I had a left uh, vocal cord injury, or I had like a cyst on my left vocal cord. Hmm. Um, it was the size of my pinky nail. It was humongous and completely random. Just like you get a cyst on any part of your body, it hmm. was on my vocal cord for some reason. Um, so it put me down. It put me down for a good part of the year that year, and I had surgery. Um, I became a nanny in that time and, you know, was recovering. And I eventually started doing music again, obviously, and I just sort of hobbied it. And um, and I got better. Everything healed. The surgery was scary, but it also was just part of that, um, you know, part of me that taught me a lot, and and it was so nice to be able to overcome something so big. Very cool. And did, maybe did that give you some inspiration, even to write some stuff too about uh, some setbacks in your oh, life? Absolutely, and it definitely inspired me to, um, you know, start speaking to kids and tell them that you know things are things sometimes feel impossible and things don't always go your way, but. When you can work hard and persevere through these tough times, it, it feels so good to, to come out on the other side. You know, you would mentioned being a nanny and you're a rocker. What was that like, being a rocking nanny? <laughs> <laughs> I always joke because, you know, people look at me and I have a lot of tattoos and I have black hair and, you know, I have my nose pierced and... And they say, like, how are you ever, how, what kind of family ever hired you? And I think that's so funny because, um, you know, I did get hired as a nanny. And, and it was a family in Edina. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was just something that they, like, totally saw through. And they, they, know, they knew that after one meeting I had a very strong connection with their kids. I love kids. Um, and they were very musical and talented family as well. Um, so it was an amazing experience. I, I love I love young adults and I love inspiring kids because they actually really inspire me. And I was I was very blessed to have that experience. And those kids are the ones that pushed me to audition or follow through with the audition for The Voice. And so without them, I'm not sure I would be in this position. Wow, that's really cool. We're talking with Kat Perkins. Let's talk about The Voice. Obviously, everybody probably wants to know about that, at least around here how that all happened and that. Yeah. And how, how did it all come about? Obviously, you mentioned the kids pushed you into auditioning. So what was the process to get you to that next level? So I, when I, after surgery, I started to perform a little bit. When I started performing again, one of my main missions was to figure out how to entertain the troops in the Middle East. So I found an agent actually based out of Minnesota, hmm. believe it or not, that, hired bands to go over to the Middle East and all over the bases to, you know, pr provide entertainment for the troops. So my very first tour to the Middle East, the desert, the sandbox, I, um, I had a layover in Amsterdam with my band. And, um, and so I started singing in the airport because there was uh, a piano there. And everybody started to film it. Like, I opened my eyes in the middle of the song, and there was a whole bunch of cameras and iPads and, uh, and people were filming this thing. It ends up going up on YouTube, and the producers of The Voice saw the video, and they contacted me and said, hey, we would love for you to audition for our show, um, because they do a fair amount of recruiting for that show, and they're very open about how that they do that. Right. Um, and so I, I got this email followed by a phone call, and I thought it was fake, um, <laughs> but eventually you know, was convinced that this is real. And... Uh, and I looked at those kids and I said, oh, my gosh, what should I do? I, I don't know if I could ever go on a television show or even audition for one. I, 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 you know, I'm sort of scared of that. And the littlest girl, she was five years old at the time, she mm -hmm. looked up at me with her giant brown eyes and she said, Kat, why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know what? You're right. Why wouldn't I? Life is short. Let's do this. Right. And I explained to them, I said, if I go far in the process, 
this might be something where I'd have to take a lot of time away from you guys, but I would love your support. And they were completely understanding, and the entire family was. And, and man, they, they came out to The Voice, and they came to a couple different tapings, and they were, they were an amazing support system for me. Very cool. And, uh, you know, I have to admit it, I did watch The Voice. I watched you when you were on it. And uh, obviously, from being from Minnesota, I was hoping you'd go far, and you did. You you got to the semifinals and that. And you know, I guess talk about being on a program like that, and then obviously having the opportunity to be with unbelievable artists to help you become an unbelievable artist. Oh yeah, no kidding. It was like an experience of a lifetime. It was like it was like the best college you could ever have. Right. right? It was just this crazy awesome experience to be on team adam adam levine was my coach yep. um was incredible because he was so helpful and i took a lot of things that he told me into my everyday life of singing and performing and entertaining what people don't know about adam is that he's super well-rounded he plays the drums he plays mm-hmm. guitar he writes music he's super talented like all the way around and so that was super inspiring and very motivating for me. But just to have somebody tell you, hey, I love your voice, um, you know, after they turned their chair, I guess, t- turning the chair was enough to be like, oh, my God, somebody believes in me. But <laughs> to have him tell me on a daily basis that, that, I, that he loved my voice and he loved the way that I, you know, performed was incredible. Um, I got to know Blake Shelton quite a bit, too, and he was exactly how you want him to be so nice and so witty and so funny and he always called me little sis but i think he calls everybody little sis uh he uh he was also there every day to just sort of be like hey you're doing the right thing and you're amazing and and we love midwestern people um i was very lucky to have laid a lot of groundwork with my band scarlet hayes to have a huge fan base and to go on a show like that, to be able to receive the votes and, and get the confidence of, of my fans from the Midwest to help me on that journey and vote for me and put me in this awesome position. Um, so I guess I had no idea I was laying that framework when, when I was performing, um, you know, in the early two thousands, but it's a really cool experience. I'm so glad I did it. It was the most pressure I've ever felt in my life. It was the scariest thing I've ever done. Um, 15 million people watch that show every Monday. Yep. I can't, I still can't believe that. Um, so I'm so glad it, I, it's part of me and who I am. Absolutely. And obviously you'd have to believe that a show like that is a huge springboard into the next part of your career. Am I correct on that cat? Oh, absolutely. And honestly, it's sort of like, it's like anything you have to be able to know how to use it correctly. Right. And I said early on, in the process, I told my team back home, I said, listen, if I go far, well, no matter how far I go, I want to be able to use my, my new voice from this experience to do something different and completely inspiring um, because I'll, I'll have a huge opportunity in front of me to, Adam Levino, it's not really what you do on the voice, it's what you do after the voice. And so that was always very, like, inspiring to me. So I wanted to use the experience to be able to reach out to kids and combine my two favorite things, which are kids and music, and go out and inspire kids to follow their dreams and to be kind to one another and to just sort of be confident in who they are and find out what they are, what they're good at. And obviously you've done something. You've got a new song uh, after The Voice now. I believe your second song that uh, has been released out. This is called Drive, yeah. which I think you have a new album coming up too in a little bit. Am I correct on that? Which will be titled Drive? We do. Okay. We, we were going to call it Drive, and then I thought maybe we should just do self-titled. Cat Perkins, <laughs> Cat Perkins. Cat Perkins. Um, yeah. Uh, July 10th, we'll, we'll be able to drop that. That's just, that's breaking news because we just got our release date the other day. So July 10th, All right. the full record that will feature the single that dropped yesterday called Drive. Let's talk about the uh, single and the story behind the current single. What, what is the story behind Drive? <laughs> so growing up in rural North Dakota, rural Midwest, um, one of the things we did for fun in the summertime when school was out was was um, driving around. Even in college, even when we were adults, you know, we would drive around in the summer and we would roll our windows down and, and blare music. And I wanted to capture that feeling in a song. As shallow as that sounds, that was my mission, to capture that feeling of 
the summer and having fun and picking up my girlfriends in, in my car and, and driving around and, and having fun. So I went to my friend Shelly, who lives in Nashville, and I said, hey, if, if, you, if you have an idea that can, you can take this farther with me, I want to co-write a song. And, man, she totally, completely took this idea and, and wrote this song, Drive, with her girlfriends. And and I loved it. So, boom, we have Drive. And I um, we released it yesterday, and I feel like it was the most successful release. It was only the second one, yes, we've done. But it was an incredible day yesterday. We went to 22 on the iTunes charts, which is wow. unheard of with an independent artist. Absolutely. Um, I just had a ton of support, so I'm super proud of, of Drive. And obviously the album coming out now on July 10th, we know that. What is that album kind of going to sound like? Is is it got a little everything in it, or what, what's this kind of the direction towards it? It does. My, um, you know, I think some somewhat of my downfall over the years was, was being kind of a broad artist. Like, I knew I was a rock artist, mm-hmm. but I have such a broad interest in music. I listen to everything from blues to country to pop rock, you know, everything, so... When it came to making a record, I always wanted to do everything, you know. But people would say, you can't do that in the industry. You can't do that. Well, now I felt like I can really do that. I, mm-hmm. I make the rules. I'm independent. Yep. Um, my fan base from The Voice turned out to be from ages 5 to 85. <laughs> and so I feel like the best thing I can do to speak to those fans is to make a record that is completely broad and it will appeal to everyone so it has a little bit of rock it has a little bit of pop it has some blues and it's got some um theatrical stuff on it and it's got some ballads so it's kind of something for everyone very cool very cool you kind of answered a few of my next questions here but uh if something was in uh, something would shock me that's in your music collection what might that be so probably the opera stuff that okay. I listen to. <laughs> yeah. I love classical music. I um, I actually was classically trained for 11 years. Okay. And so I listen to a lot of opera and a lot of just instrumental classic, um, especially because it's, it's nice to depart from something I'm doing every, all day long. You know, if I'm seeing rock music all day long, right. the last thing I want to do is jump in my car and listen to rock music. I, I, I love to wind down with classical or jazz and... Um, yeah, I love I love that I can say that because I appreciate all types of music. Very cool. You know, another question too. Uh, since we're talking a little bit about rock, uh, and you do listen to some rock music, I gotta believe. Uh, what what current band maybe oh, yeah. out? What current bands out there right now are you kind of liking on the rock side of things? On the rock side of things, it, it's amazing because there's you know people would argue there's not much of a scene right now, but I seem to find rock all the time um i love the girlfriended bands there seems to be an influx of yes. girlfriended bands right now so i'm a huge pretty reckless fan and i'm a huge hailstorm fan always have been and i actually have gotten i've met lizzie hale many times because we've performed together a couple times back in the day um so they stand out in my mind um oh man let's see i'm trying to think of a a dude fronted band that I'm listening to right now. I, I, kill me. I don't kill me for saying this. I've always been a Nickelback fan. I've been to their concert like three times and I love them and I've got to meet them. And maybe that is different from other people. Cause right. they're so nice and they're such great dudes. Um, well, here's the deal about Nickelback. Nickelback in my collection with Nickelback though. I mean, obviously they were all at the same point. Every artist has been, they were a nobody and they had to get to a somebody and they are. And sometimes the somebodies now are hated because they were, you know, they're so doing so well. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, it, it, it's always I when you're that, on top, they don't like you. <laughs> yeah. With anyone, I think it's, you know, people are always looking to rip somebody down, right. tear somebody off their pedestal, but you know, I appreciate the the songwriting and the production of of a good band, and, and Nickelback to me is that. So, I I love that they have success. I haven't really listened to much Twin Cities radio lately because I'm up here in Little Falls, two hours away, so we're just out of the mix of that. Have you had a chance to hear your song or songs on the radio down there? I have. Thank God. Um, I didn't know if it was ever going to be possible. It's such a it's such a big market. It is. And it's tough. There's such a stronghold. Yeah, and as you know, the the big the big radio companies they're hard to break into. Right. Um, but uh, we have broken into some of them, and so it's really 
weird and cool to sometimes hear it on the radio, especially when we're um, on a, on the way to a show or something. Um, it's been really an awesome thing to, to hear it. Yesterday I heard a ton of it um, right. because people were giving it a test out here. And, and there's just always something to hear in your song on the radio that you'll never, you'll never hate. It's a different sound. It's all compressed and it's amazing and it just sounds like something you can be proud of when you hear it over the airwaves. Yeah, absolutely. And that was kind of my next question. What does it mean to you to hear your music on the radio? You just kind of answered it, didn't you? Yeah, it means the world to me. And, and when I get a text to say, oh my gosh, I just heard your song on the radio, or I'll get somebody's screenshot of, of my my song on the radio or like XM radio, and it just it just fills my heart up to know that, that somebody finds me good enough to spin on the radio because that's how I grew up. I grew up listening to the radio and every single day I grew up on a farm and that's what we did. We, we listened to the radio and drove green truck. And, <laughs> and so it's just a cool thing to feel like I've made it because I'm on the radio. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's sometimes that's what it used to be. Uh, you know, in today's world now there's all the other things, but I think you even that one step above everybody else yeah, you're on the radio, but you also are on television too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Who I just, I can't even believe that that is part of the deal that I've done that. But um, and I was a huge fan of the voice myself from the get go. I was a nanny when it when it first came on the air, and so every Monday and Tuesday I would watch that show with the kids. So to be now on the other side of it, and to say that I was on that show, and people recognize me every single day, every single place that I'm at. You know, at the Stones concert tonight, it'll yes. be a lot of, oh, my God, Kat, we take a picture? <laughs> that is something that is nuts to me that people recognize me from TV. <laughs> Do you have a... Uh, I'll never get used to it. I was going to say, I'm assuming that a lot of people come up for pictures and then they want an autograph and that, too. So do you have your uh, little signature the way you have it, uh, like to have it done? I do. <laughs> I do, and I've I've actually kind of developed that years ago in my band, okay. Charlotte Hayes, and I would sign our CDs, and so I kept true to that signature. There's a lot of people that will screenshot and send me, you know, like a, a signed Scarlet Hayes CD, and it's got the same signature, and they, they love it that I've been able to keep it consistent. Um, yeah, of course, I get stopped in the Mall of America all the time. That's probably the biggest one here, because I live right near it, right. and... So when, when I do need something, I run over there, and I just have to remember to always tack on about 30 minutes to my trip over there because, <laughs> you know, I'll get stopped. But I absolutely love it, and I can't believe that people even recognize me. I just I just can't believe people supported me so much in this area. I'll well, be forever grateful. Well, like you said, there was 15 million viewers, so that's a lot of people watching. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 15 million people. And, of course... I always thought about that. It was like my little subconscious voice would never let that go. Right. So that is incredible. And, and it is, when you think about that, then yes, of course, a bunch of them are from this area. And and they will recognize me. So that's really cool. We're talking with Kat Perkins. I know we're about ready, running out of time here and you got to go. I, it's one other question I'll ask and then we'll get some information about how they can get more information about your music. But what artist, and this might, this would be interesting actually since you know a lot of well-known artist, but what artist would you like to cover one of your songs? So you get to pick oh. somebody to cover one of your songs that you've done. That is such a great question. I mean, I'm a huge fan of like the gender bender stuff, so I feel like I should choose a male singer Okay, um, that I'm a huge fan of. And let me just think, let me think of something that would be super cool. Um, of course, Adam. I mean, Adam Levine would be <laughs> an amazing twist of events because obviously I was on his team right. um, and he's super successful right now. That would be really cool for him to cover one of my songs. Maybe we should like... We should just do a campaign, okay. like a Twitter campaign, and be like, hey, Adam Levine, cover one of my songs, take me on tour, and we'll bring life full circle. There you go. little <laughs> little collaboration together, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, that, that, I think that sounds perfect. And uh, I, I'm assuming you got right on speed dial there, right? Just give the, you know, the... <laughs> you know, it's funny. I actually do have him on speed dial. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> the know, secret's out. And I... Uh, I am lucky enough to be one of those that still, he still answers my call. And I was still, just going to say, does he answer, though? <laughs> he does. He does. It's maybe not every time, but he's been so supportive. And 
when he came to town here, right. he is the one that called me and said, hey, I'm in your town. Would you like to hang out for the day? Right. So. Well, I'm a little busy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, are you serious? Of course I will. I mean, I already was trying to get tickets anyway. And, right. And now uh, he's like, oh, don't worry about it. He put me in the front row and <laughs> we hung out for the evening. It was ridiculous. So it's really cool. And he tweeted about my single and he's very supportive about me releasing songs. Um, you never know what's in the works. I know that there's there's some talk with him because he is so supportive yep. that he would like to try to do something for me. And there always is talk about it. But we'll see eventually if that can ever happen. We just have to stay on him because he's a, he's a busy, busy man. Absolutely. And the squeaky, what's the old adage? The squeaky wheel always gets the grease. So you want to stay on that, yeah. right? <laughs> well, that's the reason why I kind of asked that question, and especially for you, because I always ask this question to artists, what artists would you like to cover one of your songs? When you were on The Voice, you were covering everybody's song at that time. You know, at least the songs that you had picked were songs that people, you know, had known from other artists. So, so it's kind of interesting to see right. what you would pick and which artists you'd like maybe to cover one of your songs. So there's, there's another answer to that question because I, um, I was lucky enough to cover a couple of awesome artists on the show. Right. That was Stevie Nicks. Yep. And the other one was Heart. Mm -hmm. So if, on the girl side of things, if they ever covered one of my songs, I would flip out. It would be <laughs> like my life could be over. There you go. Uh, but that was huge shoes to fill to be able to do that. And I was terrified to sing songs of, of my, you know, my heroes, right. my, my, um, idols. And, um, but I was lucky enough to be, to be able to do that. I got a, a nice message from Ann Wilson while I was on the show saying, uh, thanks for covering magic man and you killed it girl. And thanks for doing that. So I about died right there. <laughs> well, I, I, I said my, of course she doesn't, she doesn't use like Twitter or anything, so it was like we couldn't get like the big tweet out of it. But I right. get a personal message from her, which was crazy. Isn't that crazy now how society is? Uh, the Twitter, all that kind of stuff. And you know, twenty years ago, you'd actually have to pick up the phone, and call, or maybe even send a, a, a message via mail. <laughs> yeah, just like Ann did. She picked up the phone and called the producers and said, "Hey, I want to send a message to Cat because." She actually had to do a lyric rewrite for the song, so she, she knew it was happening, right. and she ended up watching and sending me that message. So she old schooled it. We call that. Yeah, you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned that too because they have to get you have to get approval from these artists to do these songs. Am I correct on that? Yes, correct. So there's an entire what we call a clearance team, and they right. have 24 hours to clear the song with the the original writers and artists. Um, and you know, there's a lot that won't give up their songs. Right. Um, uh, I know that they've had trouble in the past with all of the Michael Jackson songs, except for this year they got two of them cleared, which is amazing to watch. Right. Um, and Led Zeppelin won't do it. Prince won't do it, which is super sad because, of course, you know, I have a, a, a special place in my heart for another Minnesota dude. But right. um, a lot of people just won't. They don't want their song covered. They don't want it to be depicted or edited in a weird way because mm -hmm. on The Voice, you know, you never do a full song. No. You, it doesn't feel that way, but you never do a full song. You only do a two-minute version of the song. Is that what so it, it is? It's, it's two minutes? I thought it was only about a minute. It seemed like half the time. <laughs> yeah, the first, the blind auditions are 90 seconds. Okay. So you know, just a minute and a half. That's the shortest it ever gets. And right. then the longest it ever gets is two and a half minutes. So between those times, it is, it's never a full song. Very cool. Well, Kat, I know you have to get going, but we want to let people know out there how they can learn more about your music, and uh, how can they do that, Kat? Well, of course, now you can download my new single, Drive, on iTunes, and you can get it on Amazon and all of the other platforms as well, but iTunes is my favorite, so I always mention that one first. Um, and, of course, my last single was called Fearless. That's all, too. Um, the album will be coming out July 10th, and we'll be able to get a hard copy at our shows if you come to see me in Minnesota. Um, and you can look on my website, catperkins.com, to see where I'm playing. And then the album will also be on iTunes. And then on social media, I'm Cat Perkins Music. Um, so that's Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all of them. Cat Perkins Music. Awesome. And I, and I see, uh, I did look, and I see you are touring a lot this summer in the upper Midwest, aren't you? I am, and lucky enough to be in Minnesota for about a half a dozen of, of those dates. So, um, But the Midwest will be kind of my home again this summer, which is great. 
Barry. Lots of festivals. Hey, I enjoyed this. A lot of fun talking with you, and I wish you the best of luck uh, from here on out. Thank you so much, and thanks for your support. Absolutely. And by the way, we're going to play your new single right now, Drive. Does that sound good? Oh, my God, that sounds great. It's a magical moment. I hope you guys love it. Here it is, brand new music from Cat Perkins. It's Drive. It's on the dark on FM 94.